Good. The Trailblazers leave Portland. Does Portland have what it takes to hold on to the Trailblazers? In this video, we'll talk about that. First, a bit of disclosure. I personally don't want the team to leave, but I think it's an interesting topic considering the current situation that is in Portland for the Trailblazers. So Portland Trailblazers history, they were founded in 1970, been around for 50 years. They won the championship in 1977, and they made two other trips to the finals. They have a modern arena, opened in 1995. It's on the higher end of capacity in the league. They have a monopoly in Portland for the big four sports leagues, and they only share Portland with the Timbers of the MLS, but they're not in the big four, they're in the big six. So Portland, Oregon, metro population is about 2.5 million. That makes them 25th in the US, and Oregon population is 4.2 million, but their TV market is 22nd in the States. Now reasons for them to stay. They're the only team in the city in the Big Four, and the MLS team, they play in the summer. So they don't really overlap and compete. They are seventh in the league for attendance in 2019, averaging 19,500 per game. They have a long history in Portland. They've been around for 50 years. They have a modern arena, and their arena lease is until 2025 and they are 13th in the league for revenue. Now there's a bit of a perfect storm of reasons why they could leave. Their owner unfortunately died in 2018. They are operating at a loss. The impacts of COVID-19, a ballooned franchise value, and they're a smaller market team. Now ownership, Paul Allen sadly died in 2018. He doesn't have a wife or any kids. His sister, Jody Allen, was made executor of his will, and she's shown little interest in running the team. And Paul Allen also owned the Seattle Seahawks and a min minority share in the Seattle Sounders. Now with the Seahawks, when you buy an NFL team, you have to come up with a succession plan if, God forbid, you die. There's, we're not really sure if the NBA has a similar plan, so they're more up in the air than the Seahawks. Now, operating revenue and value. In 2019, according to Statista, brought in $287 million, that made them 13th in the league, but $5 million less than the league average of 292 because the big market teams brought in a larger portion of revenue. According to ESPN, in 2016, the Trailblazers were operating at a loss, even after revenue sharing was calculated. And that's while the team was filling their arena. Now, Forbes valued the team in 2020, this year, as worth $1.85 billion, which also made them 13th in the league. Now, Paul Allen purchased the team in 1988 for $70 million, so that's quite an inflated value over the years. Now, can revenue be improved? Now, the games are already played uh, on average at full capacity, so you can't sell more tickets. And Portland isn't really a corporate center for sponsorship, so you can't really improve on that part. Now, the arena is as modern as they come, so you can't build a new arena and expect more revenue because this arena has everything that you need. Now the Portland TV market isn't that large and you can't go into the region because people in Seattle and Washington wouldn't really support the Trailblazers because they had a rivalry with the Supersonics. Now, and COVID-19, the pandemic is likely to reduce fan attendance, whether that's they have to play without fans or capacity will be limited, but that'll also reduce revenue. Now, will the team be sold and who will buy? Most likely, the team will be sold. Money can be used for Paul Allen's charity projects. Now, $1.85 billion is a large price tag for a team that loses money and has few options for improving their revenue. Now, there's some precedent. precedent. The LA Clippers were sold in 2014 for $2 billion. The Houston Rockets were sold for $2.2 billion in 2017. Now, it'll be hard to find 
a local owner or an owner willing to keep the team in Portland for that price. A buyer will want to improve profitability and quite po possibly that means moving the team to a better market for those opportunities. More corporate sponsorship so, and such. Now if a buyer wants to move a team they'll have the issue with the lease for the arena. They will either have to ride out the lease or negotiate a way out. Now where could they move? Now there are two bigger markets in the states, bigger TV markets than Portland without an NBA team. That's Seattle and Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay area. Now Seattle, almost 4 million people, they have a lot of large corporations headquartered in that in Seattle and the area. Now they have previous history with the NBA, so they have a, a fan base there, but you don't know how Seattle fans would feel about taking the team from Portland. They have a modern arena under construction for the NHL team, which starts play in 2022. That was the big issue why Seattle lost the team, was because they didn't have an arena that could bring in the revenue they wanted. But in 2022, they will have that arena. Tampa Bay, they have a modern arena, but I mean, they're not as ideal as Seattle. Now in conclusion, it will be hard to sell the team with the stipulation that they have to keep the team in Portland. They would probably have to reduce the asking price. There are bigger markets that the NBA would want to be in than Portland. And with the current situation, the Trailblazers are in a lame duck situation. So we'll see what happens going forward. Personally, I think it's quite possible that the team moves. It'll be hard to find an owner that'll keep the team local. Thank you for watching. What are your thoughts on the Trailblazers situation? Will they move? Will they stay? Let me know in the comments below.